Hi everybody, welcome to Mitch Maths. My name is Mitch and in this video we're going to be talking about bounds. So this follows on really nicely from the previous video that I did on rounding numbers. Because in this video we're going to be thinking about what are the consequences of rounding numbers and what could that number have been before it was rounded. So we're going to be looking at what are the upper and lower bounds of a number before it was rounded. And then we're going to be moving on to looking at what could be the maximum and minimum value of some calculations that have used numbers that have been rounded. And I'll show you guys how this relates to an error margin, which is something that you'll see quite a lot in science or engineering. OK, so now let's think about the upper and lower bounds of a number. So what this is, is essentially thinking about what could be the lowest and what could be the largest numbers that when rounded would give us the number that we've got in question. Okay, so questions like this would always give you a number and then they'll tell you to what degree it's been rounded to. And from then you can work out what would be your upper and lower bounds. So if we had, for example, eight meters to the nearest one meter, Okay, so we want to work out what is the upper and lower bounds of this. So the quickest way to calculate this is to look at what degree are we rounding this to. So we go into the nearest one meter and then we want to plus and minus half of that onto our value. Okay, so the answers, so the lower bound would be equal to 8 minus half of to what we're rounding to so half of one is 0 0.5 so the answer there would then be 7.5 meters okay and then we'll do the exact same thing for the upper bound as well so we'll say the upper is equal to 8 but this time we'll add it on 0 0.5 equals 8.5 meters okay so that is the upper and lower bound of 8 to the nearest one meter so a quick way to check this is essentially to round them up the other way okay so if we start at the lower bound then we will think 7.5 rounding that to the nearest whole number if you go back and remember our previous video we'll know that 7.5 rounds up to 8 meters okay Things don't quite work out then for the upper bound, because if you look at here, we've got 8.5. And if we were rounding that to the nearest metre, this would round up to 9, because it's 5. However, in reality, any number below 8.5, no matter how small below this, would round down to 8. So for example, if we had 8.4999999 recurring forever, that would round down to 8 meters okay and because 4.99999 forever is so close to 8.5 when we're stating upper and lower bounds we'll state we'll state 8.5 as our upper bound okay so now I've slightly changed the question then and I've said so we're sticking with 8 meters but this time we're rounding it to the nearest 0 0.1 meters okay so now it's, now it's got a whole further degree of accuracy. It's now no, no longer to the nearest metre. It's now to, down to the nearest 0 0.1 metres or to the nearest 10 centimetres, this would be. So for this, though, we'll carry on doing the exact same thing we did in the previous part of the video. So we'll add and minus half of this to find our upper and lower bounds. So to find our lower bound, we would do 8 minus half of 0 0.1 which is 0 0.05 and this would give us 7.95 meters and our upper bound would be equal to 8 plus 0 0.05 and this would give us 8.05 meters okay and another quick way of checking this just like the last time 
because we're doing it to the nearest 0.1 meter or i.e. to the nearest decimal place then we can round these numbers to the to one decimal place and that will both give us 8.0 which is the same as 8. So now we're going to look at questions which ask us to calculate the max and minimum values of some calculations. Okay, so the example that I've got here then is of a square and the side lengths are 4.1 meters and 7.5 meters to the nearest 10 centimeters. And we need to find what is the maximum and minimum value of the area. Okay, so obviously the area is the product of the two sides and here we want to know what is the maximum and minimum values of the area if the side lengths are measured to the nearest 10 centimeters or to the nearest 0.1 of a meter okay so to calculate these in we need to do the exact same thing as we did in the previous part of the video and work out what are the bounds of these numbers okay so for 7.5 then this is the nearest 10 centimeters so it's nearest 0.1 meters we want half 0.1 and plus or minus that to the 7.5 okay so the lower will end up being 7.45 because that's 7.5 minus 0 0.05 which is half of 0 0.1 and the upper will be 7.55 okay so that's the upper and lower bounds for 7.5. Now we'll do the exact same thing for 4.1. So the lower would be 4.05. And the upper would be 4.15. Okay, so now what we do is if we want to work out the minimum area, we'll just take the lower bounds and multiply them, or for the max area, We'll take the upper bounds and multiply them. Okay, so I'll just grab my calculator for that then. Okay, so to work out the minimum value, we'll do 7.45 multiplied by 4.05, and that gives us. 30 point, I'll do this to one decimal place, 2, and then to work out the max, we'll do 7.55 multiplied by 4.15, and that gives us 31.3. Okay, and that's how you do it. You just take the upper and lower bounds of each of the numbers individually and then perform the equation that you want. So in this case, it's the area. So it's, you multiply them and you perform that using the lowest of them or the highest of them to get you the maximum and minimum. All right. So also in this video at the start, I referenced the error margin. OK, so what that basically is, is the range that your answer could fall into, either it's your margin of error. So in our case, it'd be the difference between our maximum and minimum possible values. So if we just take those away from each other then, we can get our error margin. So if we do 31.3 minus 30.2, our margin of error is 1.1. So the actual answer if these numbers are rounded to the nearest 10 centimeters, the actual answer could be anywhere between that 30.2 and that 31.3, anywhere in that space of 1.1. Okay, so I just wanted to go over one more example then, of an example which has a really tricky part in it, which might catch out a lot of people. So I'll show you guys what that is when we get there. So the example I've got is, so we've got X is, 8.6 and y is 4.9 and both of these are to the nearest one decimal place okay what is the maximum and minimum values of x divided by y so just like the previous part then we need to work out the upper and lower bounds of these numbers so let's do that so for 8.6 to one decimal place then so this is to the nearest 0.1 so the lowest will be 
Uh, so it would be 0.1, half that is 0.05. So we'll minus that from 8.6. So it's from 0 0.05. And that will give us 8.55. And the upper will be 8.6 plus 0 0.05. And that will give us 8.65. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing for y, so for 4.9. So the lowest will be 4.9 minus 0 0.05. And that will give us 4.85. The upper will be 4.9 plus 0 0.05. And that will give us 4.95. Okay, so now we've got our upper and lower bounds of both these numbers then, we can now look at which numbers we need to divide to get our maximum and minimum values. Okay, so the biggest slipping up point on this question would be to take both of the lowers and divide them to get the minimum, and to take both of the uppers to uh, divide them to get the maximum. And that's exactly what we've done in the previous examples, and, that, and that's because it worked because we multiplied them. However, this time we're now dividing them. And that's the bit you need to watch out for. Because we need to think about when we're dividing two numbers, the larger we make the denominator, so the bottom number in the fraction, the larger we make that, the smaller the overall number will be. Okay? And that's the tricky bit. This is sort of reversed. So in reality, for the value that we're putting on the bottom, we want this to be the biggest to give us the lowest overall number. Okay, so to find our uh, maximum then, what we want to do is we want to take the largest number on top, okay, because the larger you make that, the bigger the overall fraction will be. So we to take our biggest x number, so x is a x is 8.6, so the, we want to take the upper limit of that, so that would be 8.65. And you want to divide this by the lowest number on the bottom, because the lower you make that, the bigger the overall fraction will be. So for our y, we want to take the lowest number, so our lower bound. Okay, so for that, the y was 4.9, so we'll take the lower bound of that, which is the 4.85. Okay, and we'll now just do that fraction. So we'll take 8.65 and divide that by 4.85, and that will give us 1. Point, and we'll take, do it to two decimal places this time, 78. Okay, so now we want to find our minimum value. So our minimum will be the exact opposite of that. So for our minimum, we want our number on top to be the lowest it can be. So for our x value, we want the, uh, the lowest number, so we want 8.55. And on the bottom, we now want our biggest number for y, because that will give us the lowest overall number for our fraction. So for y, we want to take the upper limit this time, so that's 4.95. Okay. So now we're going to repeat that in the calculator. So now we go 8.55 divided by 4.95, and that gives us 1.72 or 73 to two decimal places. Okay, and there we go. So another really quick sanity check for this is if our maximum number is bigger than our minimum number. We know we're somewhere in the right place. And if you want, you can actually check this. If you're unsure about what I was saying about uh, reversing the lower number in the fraction, you can try this out with the other numbers and you'll find that if you take a lower number in here, you'd actually get a higher number here. And in this case, we're looking for the absolute minimum. So you've got to take the biggest number you can for your denominator. Okay. I hope that made sense guys. I really hope with this video it really helped to get a grasp on what bounds are. So always looking at what is the maximum and minimum numbers 
that they can be because they are rounded. Okay, and this is really, 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 really important to think about in everyday life, especially if you go into science or engineering, because whenever you measure anything, you're going to be measuring it to the nearest something, whether it's the nearest whole meter or to the nearest millimeter or even better, you're always going to be measuring it to some accuracy. And doing this highlights to you the error that you can get from these measuring instruments. And it also highlights to you how no measuring is perfect and you'll always have some degree of error. Okay, if you like this video, then go check out more videos on Mitch Maths. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much.